So the first quiz set got closed. I guess everybody got their grade, right? Happy? It's not like median is 100, so that's good. And uh, if you, so again, just a reminder that the best seven scores is going to be included in your final grade. So uh, don't get you know, discouraged, although you, you know, so you didn't, if you didn't get the uh, first score for the quiz, so you'll be fine next, next time. You can get the uh, better. So uh, everybody got the uh, homework set via email. So um, this is a little more challenging than the uh, quiz, obviously. But, and then it's going to be a little more challenging, too, than the, uh, um, the exam, uh, midterm and final. So I int intentionally make this thing a little bit challenging because it's homework, and then you guys have uh, two weekends to still solve this whole problem. And then uh, we are here to help out if you have any problem to solve this problem. Myself and TA back there, Ian is back there, so come see us if you have any problem. And then we will discuss about uh, this problem again during the discussion session. So, and then uh, I think number three is going to be most difficult one, I think, most for most of you. So we will uh, briefly touch about uh, this problem actually today. And then before we uh, talk about today's topic, so we, um, last uh, lecture, we watched the, uh, um, the news about a um, huge uh, smog problem that was um, happened in early this year in Beijing. And then um, actually, actually that triggers a lot of, uh, um, even the uh, um, um, little bit of diplomatic problem. That's because, so this is going to be your reading assignment uh, next week, which is a New York Times article. So basically what U.S. government, U.S. Embassy in Beijing is doing is that they have um, little uh, the gadget that can measure particle concentration in Beijing. And then they tweeted the number concentra concentration of the particular matter, basically hourly basis. So this is local time. So I think they are 17 hours ahead of us. No, actually 15 hours. So 6 a.m. out there. So basically this is the real time data every hour, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., October 11th. And then they just put the PM 2.5. Everybody remember what PM 2.5 means? So particular matter smaller than 2.5 uh, micrometer, right? So they tweeted the, uh, the number they observed on top of the uh, U.S. Embassy in Beijing. And then they uh, kind of published the uh, it's moderate level of the pollution. It's good level. But most of the cases, if you go down and down and down, it's uh, unhealthy or very unhealthy. It can be disastrous, whatever. So uh, previously, um, Chinese government closed the data of the air pollutants to public. But obviously, people in Beijing and in every place in the world can see the Beijing air quality from data from on top of the gadget instrument that was, uh, happened to be installed in the uh, uh, Beijing, embassy, Beijing uh, U, 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 uh, U, the United States Embassy. So my question to you that it's supposed to be a clicker question, that this thing is not functioning today also. <laughs> so uh, three times in the law, that's uh, a shame. But my question to you is that, uh, obviously some student is, is leaving immediately they hear about that news about the uh, not fun functioning eye clicker. But uh, my question to you is that, is that right or wrong that uh, US government actually have a little instrument on top of their you know, embassy and then publish that data to public. It can be a little controversy. And then this news article is actually talking about Chinese government uh, officials that complained about US publishing the data about the air quality about the Beijing. So, so I click it's not working, but let me hear your voice. What do you think? Is it the right thing to do or wrong thing to do? Anybody? Want to talk about it? Nope, no opinion. 
whatever, back there. That's true, but my, probably my question is that, is that right that uh, other people from, the, people from the other country get into the, uh, uh, China and then doing the uh, uh, air quality measurement and then publish that data to the uh, uh, inter in internet? Probably that's the question. And go for it, go for it, just, you can just talk. Okay. If people say, like, are they good enough of traveling to Beijing and yep. they deserve to know this um, before they can make their decision? Okay. And um, I just think people deserve to know. I think that argument behind of the, uh, the U.S. logic behind of that um, this uh, um, Twitter, Twitter account is that to the uh, there are people. So American citizens who travel in China need to know that how bad it is air quality so that they can, they can aware that what they should do on the street, things like that. So that's the one argument, actually. Any opposition towards that that's the, not the right thing to do? Campaign? No? So everybody thinks that that's the right thing to do? Yep? Um, I'm not saying that it's not, that it is, like, it isn't not right, but obviously, like, the U.S. might have something behind doing that, because U.S. and China relations are getting kind of tense, and China is a developing country. They're still um, industrializing, which the U.S. did hundred, uh, like 100 years ago. Everyone mm -hmm. was posting, you know, how bad the air pollution was back then. Yep, yep. So, yeah, that's, you, you, you can have your op own opinion. So there are two scrub thoughts out there. Actually, even bigger problem at that time was that actually the number from these Twitter accounts and then what Chinese official number that Chinese government published to the public has a difference. Actually, Chinese numbers was much lower and then that was the big problem. So you can read this article that I will just put, put on the for uh, this week's uh, reading assignment. And then um, so think about what's the, you know, whether it is good thing, the right thing to do or you know, wrong thing to do, things like that. So this is kind of a thought. Uh, you need uh, something like something you can think of, of um, speculating of that in terms of the science, environment, and then even the uh, little bit of diplomatic issues, things like that. So today and then next lecture, we'll talk about the uh, um, ozone. So I think during first class, I introduced uh, this guy, chemist who first found ozone. Uh, by doing electrolysis, uh, the water, and then he just smells something, and then uh, he just first called it ozone uh, in Greek word to smell. So basically, one, once uh, ozone concentration gets high, actually you can smell that ozone concentration, and then over and over, over and over and again, I talked about there are two kinds of ozone in in the atmosphere. One is the ozone on top in the stratosphere. That's good ozone because it absorbed UV energy from the sun so that uh, uh, this uh, layer of ozone protects protect us from the harmful UV. But once it's formed on the surface, the air we breathe, so that's the bad thing. So we will talk about next two lectures about this ozone um, in the uh, uh, lower, uh, in the atmosphere, what we call it, trop troposphere. And the chemistry behind of this, this ozone forming uh, photochemistry. So how many of you um, actually took the uh, uh, chemistry in high school? So most of you. How many of you actually heard about chemical bonding? Eh, most of you. Covalent bond? So, hey, how many of you actually not heard about the covalent bond? That's, I have no idea about the covalent bond or bonding. Don't be shy, you're fine. So everybody heard about it? Okay, that's good. So we will talk about mostly chemistry today, but uh, uh, we will go over and over again if you, don't, if you don't have a clear understanding about the reaction that I introduced today. So don't be panicked freaked out, things like that. So we'll last 
our lecture, we talked about the uh, London type smog, right? Today, we will talk about LA type smog. It's a completely different thing. And uh, we'll talk about uh, photochemical reactions. To do that, we need to understand rules of radical. So radical, by definition, it is very reactive molecule in the atmosphere. And then this triggers a lot of reactions in the atmosphere. Eventually, it is forming uh, ozone in the atmosphere. So um, again, ozone is not directly emitted to the atmosphere by human um, activity, rather formed by the uh, chemical reaction in the atmosphere. So we will talk about, we will kind of discuss about kind of exploring about the uh, uh, chemical reaction in the atmosphere. And then uh, today mostly we will talk about uh, natural tropospheric ozone, which means that before uh, human perturbation is there, what kind of the ozone concentrations are actually there in the atmosphere. So I showed this uh, photo. This is uh, um, Ari Hagen Smith, actually, he developed the, uh, uh, the chemical mechanism that ozone is forming in the troposphere. So he was a professor at Caltech, and then he actually published the first paper who uh, so kind of uh, um, explaining that ozone forming uh, uh, photochemistry in the troposphere. So maybe this back in 60 years, this is how people are doing experiment, wearing nice necktie, things like that, nice gown. But that's the one thing that you can learn from this photo. But the thing that I really want to convey from this photo is that basically what he's doing out here, you can see there this white fume is coming out. That can be either a particular matter or ozone. If ozone gets very high concentration, actually you can see the, a little bit of color, things like that. So what he's doing in here is that in this glass jar, he's just putting some of the precursors, pollutants from the human, um, uh, human uh, activity. In this case, uh, the exhaust from the cars or the uh, industrial facility. He's putting that thing in here making some reaction, and then actually the ozone is forming in this glass jar. So this is kind of, a, you can think that this is, this is kind of a mini atmosphere, and the, actually the reaction is happening in here. So uh, again, ozone in the troposphere is not directly emitted from the uh, human activity, rather something is formed in the chemical reaction in the air. So that's the, uh, one, the, one of the, uh, uh, message that, that I want to convey from this photo. So this is the uh, paper that he published in 1952. So again, um, he talked about NO and NO2, which is coming from uh, a chi exhaust. Now we discussed about it, that uh, in the atmosphere, there's a major component, uh, gas molecule is nitrogen, which happened to have triple bonding which is very stable. So this is about 79% of the air, right? And then O2, which has double bond like this, which is about 20% of atmosphere. So these are super stable molecules that are not really participated uh, the um, chemical reaction in the atmosphere. But in the uh, uh, car engine, its temperature gets high enough, the bonding can get broken up, then make NO. So this is nitrogen oxide. So this is very important precursor for the ozone formation. And then another important precursor is hydrocarbon. So hydrocarbon, by definition, carbon and hydrogen. So um, we call it uh, the compound composed by carbon and hydrogen. We call it organic molecules, right? And then, uh, so this is another word of the organic molecules. And then the hydrocarbon in the, atmosp uh, in, in the atmosphere, because it gets uh, in the atmosphere, it gets evaporated. That means it's very volatile, right? So um, from uh, this class, we will call this kind of hydrocarbon in the atmosphere as VOC, which is volatile organic compounds, right? So we 
discuss about what organic compounds are. It is composed by carbon structured molecule. And then this is a characteristic of that specific organic compound, happens to be volatile, and then gets into the atmosphere. Okay? So basically, the, and then the reaction is going on, and then these primary emission from the human activity making ozone and aerosol. So that's by definition LA type smog, okay? So we briefly talked about chemical lifetime, I think for the first class. So we love to make plus. Scientists love to make a plus. So from here, let's say this is concentration of some chemical species, and then this is time. Right? So we talked about once uh, the uh, pollutants such, such as NO and NO2 and then VOCs are emitted to the atmosphere, they are reacting each other and then uh, they are reacting each other and then forming ozone, right? So that means uh, some uh, pollutants. The initially uh, people emitted uh, those kind of uh, air pollutants then concentration is going to be high. Then once it reacts uh, with some other molecule in the atmosphere, then the concentration is going to be decreased like this, right? So eventually, if it is uh, uh, reactive enough, then all the compound is going to be removed from the atmosphere if emission stopped in some time point, right? So. When we call chemical lifetime, that means we just define the definition is that when, uh, let's assume this is concentration of one, and if it is removed until one over E, which is about 0.37. So if there's a all just reacted away and then 37% left, the time right here, we call it chemical lifetime. Okay? That's just definition. So some of the long lifetime species, such as nitrogen and oxygen, then I explained that they are very stability in the atmosphere because it's uh, that those molecules satisfy octet law and then it has triple bonding and double bonding they are super stable so that means they have a long lifetime so for example nitrogen nitrogen lifetime in the atmosphere so if there's a process just producing nitrogen just stop and then uh, it takes about million years to about 63% uh, of nitrogen is gonna be removed from the uh, atmosphere. That's by definition of the chemical lifetime, right? So, so these compounds, the long lifetime compounds, are stable compounds. And then uh, again, the other thing we talked about is that we atmospheric chemists love to uh, kind of conceptualize atmosphere as a box. And then there's uh, emission or source. And there's a sink. Some of the gas species should be removed from the atmosphere, the box in here. And then uh, the thing we are going to discuss about, uh, we are going to discuss about today is the reactions. So, Basically, if you have a very stable compound, long lifetime compound, that means that it's going to be accumulated in the atmosphere for the long time because this process that removes that specific chemical compound from the atmosphere is very slow, right? So you can think that it's the same thing. By definition, one compounds are very stable, then uh, its lifetime is going to be very long, and then the concentration of that specific compound is going to be very high in the atmosphere, all right? So they, they are all the same, same concept. But 
uh, in terms of the uh, air pollution perspective or chemic, uh, atmospheric chemistry perspective, these are not really uh, important because by definition they are stable, right? So short lifetime species like NO and NO2 that we talked about here, the NO is coming out here. So NO and NO2 kind of interconverted each other. That's something we are gonna discuss today. And then ozone has, they have, uh, have a, a relatively short lifetime from um, hours, minute. And some of the species, which we call it radical, has a, a lifetime less than a second. So uh, these compounds have short lifetime, which means they are reactive. And then, uh, and then the atmospheric concentration is very small because they are quickly reacted away uh, in the atmosphere with the other molecule in the uh, atmosphere. So that's the concept, all right? So uh, radical, Ooh, it's actually sliding. So you can basically think, think, think radical is very reactive species. So uh, the chemical background, why they are very reactive, is that for example, the hydroxyl radical, so it has six electron outer shell, but you don't need to, about, you don't need to know about the, uh, this chemical, actual background of, of this radical, but if you are a chemically inclined person, this is the why they are very uh, reactive. And then hydrogen has one electron here, and then let's make some bonding. Then the way we can make bonding is like this, right? So this two electron shared by two uh, atom is like this. But there's unpaired <laughs> electron right here. This cause all the reactivity of this compound. So any uh, 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 gas molecule has this unpaired electron. We call it radical then they are very reactive, right? This is, this is a definition. So maybe a lot of students, you guys coming from the literature world, things like that, if your background is drama or something like that, then you may think that, you know, wind is gently, you know, kind of touching your skin, things like that. You may think that air molecule is very kind of a gentle, moving kind of thing. Maybe that's your kind of world. But my kind of world is very different. So my imagination about the air molecules are very different from the, uh, this previous kind of uh, uh, literature or gentle wind kind of the world. So my kind of world is just like that, this. So you don't need to remember again this equation. But from this equation, you can actually calculate uh, the speed of the air molecule. So this each nitrogen and oxygen are air molecule. And then um, air molecule is not just staying right here, rather it's just moving along. And then uh, the, uh, the speed of the air, mo the air molecule pretty much determined by the uh, temperature. So uh, in the uh, room temperature, a little higher than room temperature, 27 degrees Celsius, this should be about 85, 80 or 85 Fahrenheit. The speed is about 1,000 miles per hour in terms of second it travel about 500 meters. Basically, in the one second, from here, you cannot cross the uh, whole campus. It may get you to the uh, university town center. It's that fast, right? So it is kind of an angry molecule. It's kind of moving along in the atmosphere. That's how you can imagine about the, uh, the uh, air molecule. That can be uh, nitrogen and oxygen, this uh, um, OH radical or NO, and then uh, organic a compound, volatile organic compound, they are all moving very, very fast fashion in the atmosphere, all right? Then what's gonna happen if they are just moving that fast in the air? Then they are gonna hit each other eventually, right? Because there's a lot of molecule in the air, then they are just moving very fast and they just hit each other. Then they will, then that's the way to finish the reaction. We will uh, uh, discuss about a little deeper about this reaction, but uh, Basically, you can think like that way, that air molecules are traveling very fast way, and then uh, there's a lot of air molecules in the air, and then once they, have, once they just hit each other, it can actually cause the reaction. So there are two, we will discuss about two kinds of reaction uh, during this uh, um, class. One is the, uh, what we call photolysis. So photolysis, by definition, it means that 
So this, uh, for example, this ozone, mo ozone molecule, once it gets light. So um, I think during the second class, we talked about uh, uh, wave and then uh, particle duality of electromagnetic wave, right? For example, the, um, the energy from the sun, it has uh, uh, characteristics of the uh, wave and then also that um, visible light or UV also has a characteristic of the uh, particle. So let's, in this case, let's just think about the particle characteristic of um, solar radiation uh, from the sun. So those energetic uh, uh, light particle from the sun hits the ozone molecule. Uh, then it can decompose oxygen atom and then uh, molecular oxygen, just like this. So uh, the reaction that uh, involves the, uh, this light uh, in the atmosphere, uh, the light from the sun, we call it photolysis. Or uh, this, uh, uh, the, this oxygen atom can uh, react with uh, some other molecule in the atmosphere, in this case water vapor, we call it a, a bimolecular reaction. So this is how uh, atmospheric OH, which is very energetic uh, radical in the atmosphere, uh, uh, generated in the atmosphere. So basically ozone get fertilized, and then this oxygen atom is uh, reactive enough to react with, with the uh, water uh, vapor, and then produce OH. So this OH radical, basically, it is very reactive, and then react with the, all those uh, the uh, atmospheric <coughs> pollutants in the atmosphere. So uh, we talked about CO, which is um, EPA designated uh, uh, criteria air pollutants. NO2, also EPA designated air pollutants. SO2, also EPA designated air pollutants. So, and then VOCs, this is a volatile organic compound, organic gases in the atmosphere, also react with OH and then removed from the, uh, from the atmosphere. So basically OH, because they, it is very, very reactive, that uh, concentrations are very small. So it is, uh, uh, the notation of this concentration might be a little confusing, maybe a lot confusing to you. Um, so let me explain uh, this uh, notation to you today. So uh, this is number of molecules in given volume, one cubic centimeter, right? So centimeter is probably about this low. So one cubic centimeter is like this, right? So I'm not really an artistic guy. So this is basically one cubic centimeter, right? So number of mo gas molecules in 25 degrees Celsius, and then one ATM, basically sea level pressure, is about 2.5 times 10 to 19 molecules per cubic centimeter. And then uh, what's the composition of the, uh, so out of this, about 79% is what? Nitrogen, right? And then 20% are uh, oxygen, and then about 1% are some other species. So typical OH concentration, right now the outside air uh, probably is, it is somewhere between 10 to 6 to 10 to 7 <coughs> molecules per cubic centimeter. So out of this, so in terms of fraction, then 2.5 times 10 to 19, and then uh, 10 to 6. So is this about 4 times? So do, 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 give and take, 100, 4, 10 to minus 15 in terms of mixing ratio. So this is really tiny, tiny, tiny fraction, but still this small fraction of the radical in the atmosphere removes, chemically removes most of the pollutants in the atmosphere. So we call this OH radical as atmospheric purity cleanser. Anybody has any question about this so far? Confusing? Fine. I can go over again. You want me to go over? Yeah, go. So I was just going to want to clarify. So the OH is good in this scenario? Yeah. Right. Okay. So 
you, you, want to have, uh, you want to maintain good amount of OH in the atoms because it removes the uh, uh, air pollutants in the atmosphere. But they happen to have a very uh, small concentration in the atmosphere. So that's all you need to know. But if you want to know a little more, you can uh, study about this chemistry and things like that. So I think last time I warned you that today is going to be the most difficult class for this whole quarter. So this is the most difficult, probably this is the most difficult slide that uh, uh, you may face this whole quarter. So, but we will, I think we'll go over this thing over and over again later. So, okay. Any question? Any more questions about this so far? Uh, isn't the product that made by uh, oxygen? This guy? Like yeah. Acid. yeah. It's also harmful. They are harmful, but these are acids. So, uh, you, so basically, rain can remove these things from the atmosphere. So it's not like the that is bad for the water quality. But in terms of the air quality, that's a good thing. <laughs> so, uh, but we are going to talk about air pollution. So uh, for the air pollution perspective, that's a great thing. But uh, we'll talk about uh, some bad thing that the sulfuric acid is, uh, has been doing past uh, 50 or 60 years when you talk about acid rain. So basically, you uh, actually move so far. Actually, you, you are going too fast, actually, from this slide. <laughs> so so uh, only you need to know at this time point is that OH radical is the, has a very small concentration in the atmosphere, and then uh, chemically remove all the air pollutants from the atmosphere. Right? Let's go. So, so this is kind of an introduction to uh, chemical reactions that's uh, going on in the atmosphere. I talked about there are two kinds of reactions in the atmosphere that at least we are going to, that's something that we are going to discuss during the, this class. One is whatever molecule it is, for example, ozone. And then uh, once there's sunlight coming along, and then sunlight is uh, strong enough, then the photons, which is fancy word of the light from, let's say, sun. And then this guy is going to decompose as atomic oxygen, and the molecular oxygen, something like that. Then uh, let's think about, we talked about time and then concentration of ozone, all right? Let's say there's a thousand molecules ozone is out here, all right? And then we want to know about how fast Ozone concentration decreases. And then we scientists hate to write sentences on the board. So what we usually do, we develop notation. So this is by definition ozone uh, concentration change over time. Okay? Then we can just make this long sentence this simple notation, all right? So basically, this is notation of how fast ozone removed from the atmosphere by this direction in the, um, in the given time, right? Right? And then there are two factors determining this removing uh, uh, speed of the ozone in the atmosphere, right? One is this, photons. If there are some just more photons in, from in the atmosphere, then uh, the removing uh, speed of the ozone is going to be much faster, right? And then another factor is the ozone concentration itself, right? If ozone concentration is high, then removing um, rate is going to be faster than when ozone concentration is lower, right? Does that make sense? So there are two independent things, ozone concentration and number of photons. So basically, 
you can uh, mathematically express uh, ozone removing rate. So basically, it's going to be removing from the atmosphere as time going by if there's, at, uh, there's uh, uh, light uh, in, in, in the atmosphere, right? So it's going to be go away. And then we uh, mathematically express this decay of ozone concentration as J, we call it photolysis rate, ozone, and then ozone concentration. OK, this is, again, definition. So this is photolysis uh, um, uh, reaction in the atmosphere. And then another thing, this is uh, definition again. For example, CO plus OH, then uh, HO, HO2, no, yeah, HO2 plus CO2. So let's talk, let's talk about the CO perspective. So in terms of the uh, uh, reaction dynamics, also let's assume this is CO. So this CO rem removal from the atmosphere from this reaction, there's two things is going to determine this CO removal rate. One is, again, in given time, maybe if you haven't, heard, haven't seen this notation, you may see this delta rotation. So delta is much, much more larger time frame. T larger um, time frame, uh, when, when we talked about this, we usually call it delta. So, but more infinite time frame, we use the D instead. So DCO is kind of the same thing. You can just use the delta also. Again, it's going to depends on OH concentration, right? When OH concentration high, then CO is the removal of the CO is going to be much faster, right? So OH concentration and then CO concentration again, just like the ozone. And then uh, we call it reaction constant. So it depends on the, how reactive they are. So this reaction constant is determined. So we are going to talk about this thing a little later. So this is the uh, uh, definition and the mathematical formulation of how we describe how fast air pollutants are removed from the atmosphere from the chemical reaction, the bimolecular reaction, and the photolysis. All right? OK. So again, this is uh, kind of a summarize of the uh, lifetime, chemical reactivity, and then concentration, all right? The, how they are related. So molecular oxygen, which is 21% of the atmosphere. Molecular nitrogen, which is uh, about 80%, 79%. They have a very high concentration. And then they are not reactive. That's probably why they uh, have, a, 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 have a, a high concentration. And then long lifetime. So once it gets more reactive, their concentration gets smaller, and then lifetime getting shorter. So they are all the same term, all right? So in terms of the uh, reactivity, lifetime, and concentration scale, you can uh, summarize all these compounds like this way, right? So it's ozone far, much, far less reactive in the atmosphere. So ozone concentration uh, in the atmosphere is far much uh, smaller than the uh, molecular oxygen and nitrogen. And then we'll talk about NO and NO2 today. And then we already a little bit, uh, discussed a little bit about the OH. So basically, uh, the molecule that we will discuss about yeah, this whole class, or the OH radical has the lowest concentration, which happened to be a really tiny, tiny fraction. We, basically, uh, we just look through about the, uh, that uh, OH uh, concentration, which is about 10 to 6 molecules per cubic centimeter. So this. Basically, in the list of this molecule, OH has shortest lifetime, and then most reactive, and then uh, uh, lowest concentration. So they all go same um, in, the, uh, uh, in terms of reactivity, lifetime, and concentration. Okay?
All right? So we talked about concentration as PPM, PPB, and PPP. And then actually homework question number three, I think. Right? Let's go back, go back, go back, go back. Here we go. Oop, one more. Talked about uh, this is mixing ratio. So PPB, the I, I, I should have removed the, uh, this volume. So parts per billion by volume and 70 P parts per billion by volume. So PPVV and then PPB is basically the same thing, right? So um, let's go. So um, the question is asked about convert this PPB, PPM, and PPT to number of molecules in given volume. And uh, where, where is it? Probably just goes away. So again, I explained that in one atmospheric uh, atmosphere pressure, and then 25 degrees Celsius, there's about 2.5 times 10 to 19 molecules in one cubic centimeter, right? And then uh, about 80%, let's just say 80% so nitrogen, right? Then out of this, how many nitrogen? So this is about, so basically 0.8, right? 0.8, so <coughs> is 10. Should be nitrogen, right? In one cubic centimeter. Because it's nitrogen. So out of this number of molecules, 80% are nitrogen. So that should be like this, right? No, it should be 19, right? Okay? And then let's say 20% are oxygen. Then it is about five times 10 to 18 molecules of oxygen in one cubic centimeter, right? Basically, if you add these things up, 100%, and then this is 2.5 times 10 to 19, right? So basically, this whole thing. Okay, this is how you convert number of molecules from PPB once you know how many molecules in the one um, in the given volume, right? So basically, this is just percentage of the number of molecules. Too many numbers? No. <laughs> you don't get it? Yeah, yeah. So okay, let's. So maybe you just overwhelmed by this this 19 thing, right? It's, it's too many. Okay, then let's go. Much, much easier way. Okay, there's 1,000 molecules in given volume. Let's just assume that, all right? Then let's say 79% are nitrogen. Then how many molecules in this number of molecules of air is, are nitrogen? How many? 790, right? Okay, and I will just I will just put some steroid steroid in this number, right? Two point five times ten to nineteen. <laughs> All right, let's say just eighty percent, and then is two point. So what's the difference between this calculation and that calculation? Numbers. Numbers, obviously, but you know you you will have the, your calculator. Excel and everything. So basically what we did is that we just put some steroid in this number and then we just are dealing with just large number, all right? Then uh, just let's stick with this then, all right? So basically you can, uh, now you can convert that number of molecules scale in given volume and then this mixing ratio scale of the concentration, all right? You think you can do that, right? No, not, not quite convinced? No, uh, okay, okay. So, hmm, let's assume 40 ppb of ozone. 
So what's the definition of this thing? Yeah, that's uh, basically reading. So more, let's go a little more deeper than that. Go for it. Yeah, molecules. Molecule in 10 to 9 molecules of gas, right? Is that right? So this is kind of fraction. And although we call it this uh, PPB, so this is basic scalar, right? So uh, in terms of fraction, we can say Right? This is fraction of ozone molecule in the atmosphere. Is that right? Everybody's with me? All right. And then let's bring that big number here, which is 2.5, 10 to 19 molecules per cubic centimeter. This is number of actual number of molecules in one cubic centimeter, all right? And then this is scaling factor, right? So we want to know how many molecules are actually ozone in this number of molecules, OK? Then what are you, what you going to do? You got to just multiply this thing into this thing, right? Um, so 40 times 10 to 9. So 10 to 9, 10 to 10, 2.5 times 40, right? So 4 times 2.5 is going to be 10. And then you have another 10, 10, 10. Wow, that's a lot of 10 molecules per cubic centimeter, right? Okay. Well, you think you have a fancy calculator, you can easily do this thing, right? Just don't get freaked out the big number because there's just simply there's too many molecules in the air, so we need to deal with the a lot just big number. So, but it can be very useful, you know. If you get lucky, once you get very rich, and then if you have a, you know, once you earn this amount of money, then you have gotta deal with this kind of big number in the future. Maybe, maybe not. But. So, uh, so just bring your imagination that how many molecules in the atmosphere. That's all I just try to do out here, right? So this is a uh, number of molecules in the one cubic centimeter. And then uh, the pollutants we are dealing with are really, really tiny fraction. If we express the concentration as mixing ratio, basically this is the uh, scalar. But uh, although it is a very small fraction, but still, if you convert this thing into number of molecules in given volume, it's still very large number of molecules, molecules, cubic centimeter. Oops. Three. OK? But uh, it's fine. It's, uh, it can be very confused, but we will go, go over this thing over and over again. So, uh, and then Ian is back there. He's going to help out this thing during the discussion session. So this is uh, partial pressure. Which means that basically a uh, rephrase of this uh, uh, ideal gas law, which is you can kind of convert this mixing ratio, PPM, PPB, and PPT, and then a pressure scale, which is uh, basically uh, there's one atm of air in the atmosphere. Then, then uh, we know 78% are nitrogen, and then 21% are oxygen. And then we can uh, interconvert this fraction of the gas into a pressure, which is 78, 8, uh, 0.78 atms are coming from nitrogen, and then 0.21 atms are coming from oxygen. And then for, in terms of CO2, it's 360 ppm parts per million. So 3.8 times 10 to minus 6 atm, the pressure, are coming from CO2, OK? So this is kind of a, how you can use this equation. So, uh, OK, this is a lot of numbers. So basically, this is what I try to explain here. So if you are confused while you are solving number three, you can take a look at this. Or just you can simply 
come see me during the office hour, then I will go over this thing over and over again until you understand this, all right? Or you can see the, uh, your um, TA back there. So let's go back to the, uh, um, the reaction in the atmosphere, all right? So let's uh, imagine the gas molecule, gas molecule here. And then uh, what's the speed of the, uh, the gas molecule? It's about 500 meter per second in the room temperature, which is about 1,000 mile per hour, right? And there's how many molecules in one centimeter, cubic centimeter? 2.5 times 10 to 19 molecules in one cubic centimeter, right? There's a lot of molecule in the, in the atmosphere, and then they are traveling very fast. And then what's going to happen if they are traveling very fast, and then there are that many molecules in the atmosphere? Then they tend to hit each other, right? In very fast speed. So they are going to come across, and they are going to hit each other. Collision is happening. Then there's two possibility. What's going to be the two possibility? Anybody? Yep. Uh, they react and combine, or they just knock each other away? Yep. They can make reaction, or they just uh, bounce back each other, and then nothing happened. There's uh, nothing in between. There's two things. They uh, do something or nothing happens. It's just bounce back away, right? So, so some of the, uh, um, the gas in the atmosphere happen to be very reactive. Then it's going to, the reaction, the uh, possibility that reaction is going to be actually happening is going to be higher, right? But if it is not that reactive gas in the atmosphere, like nitrogen and oxygen, Although they hit each other, that thing is going to happen. It's going to be bounced back, right? That's the definition of their reactivity, right? If it is very reactive, once they hit each other, then the action is going to be happening. And if it is not reactive, then nothing is going to happen. It's going to be bounced back, right? That's the definition of their chemical reaction in the atmosphere. So this is basically, again, that's funky number and then funky unit. But what you need to, so the information you need to catch, if you see this number, this is the reaction constant. So again, it, it describes about the uh, two uh, reactions. One is carbon monoxide and methane. Both of them uh, mainly react with OH in the atmosphere. And then this becomes CO2 plus HO2. And that this becomes H2O, CH3. But you don't need to worry about this part yet. So let's think about this. So there's a, let's say, CO molecule and then OH. And then there's methane molecule and OH in the atmosphere. And then they have some concentration in the atmosphere. And then there's a very small fraction of OH in the atmosphere. And then they are traveling very fast. And there's a lot of molecules. Again, this many molecules in the atmosphere, which is mostly nitrogen and oxygen. But still, in terms of fraction, fraction of this thing is still a very high number in terms of the number of molecules, right? And then uh, eventually, they just travel in the atmosphere very fast speed. Eventually, they are going to hit each other, right? Then reaction may be happening, maybe not happening, right? And then, uh, again, if you just uh, express this thing mathematical way, reaction constant
PT D-methane reaction constant So these are concentrations again, and then these are reaction uh, constant, right? Why every classroom watch is always five minutes faster than the actual time? I think probably intentionally student did thing. Um, anyway, so basically this concentration terms that determining this uh, decreasing rate of the air pollutants so why concentration term is here? Because if there's higher concentration of this molecule in the atmosphere, basically these molecules are more in the atmosphere, and then there's high possibility they are going to hit each other, right? So that's why this reaction rate re correlates with the concentration of the molecule that are actually participating the reaction. Make sense? Because there's, if there's a more molecules of CO, OH, methane, and NOH, they gonna, there's a higher possibility they're going to hit each other, right? That makes sense. And then I also explained that although it's hit each other, then some fraction of the, uh, that, uh, it, the accidents of the, uh, the hit each other to molecule, it's going to actually lead to the uh, reaction was some fraction of the uh, uh, the collision is going to be just ended up bouncing back each other of the molecule, right? That thing is determined by this reaction constant, basically possibility, right? Of the reaction is going to actually happening or not happening. So for in this case, just forget about that minus 14. That may confuse you, but if you take a look at this 5.4 and 6.7. So basically, this uh, indicate that that um, the methane in the atmosphere is more reactive than the uh, CO, which means that um, if the uh, um, CO and methane then happen to the hit with OH in the atmosphere, the odds are that uh, is uh, um, the in terms of reaction is actually going to happening. It's about, so that's 4.4 .4 and then that's 6.7, which is about, let's say, it was 7, 4, I don't know. So this is the uh, difference between the reactivity of the CO and methane, which means that actually the uh, methane is going to be more reactive in the atmosphere towards the OH, which means that if same uh, concentration of CO and methane in the atmosphere, then methane is going to be more fastly removed from the atmosphere. Basically, that is determined by this reaction constant. OK? Maybe that's a little too far, but uh, all you need to know is that there's a reaction dynamics. There are two important things out there. One is they need to hit each other, right? And then the reaction is actually, whether the reaction is going to be happening or not happening, so pretty much determined by the reactivity of the uh, that, uh, gas molecule. And then that is mathematically expre uh, expressed by this reaction constant. OK? So that's uh, physical meaning. Let's skip this thing. So. Uh, you just learned that most difficult stuff during this whole class, so you will refine after this. So let's talk about so let's talk about real air pollution now. Right? We talked about a little different thing past an hour or so. So we will talk about background air, which is uh, before the air pollution, and then polluted air. So in the even in the background air. There is a tiny, very uh, low concentration of the uh, nitrogen compound, which is NO and NO2. And then CO can be coming from wildfire, things that, like that, actually caused by natural uh, reason. Then CO, there's a little concentration of CO out there. And then SO2 can be coming from natural processes, which is 
most important one that actually the natural process that emits SO2. We talked about it. Volcano. Volcano emits a lot of SO2. And then a CO can coming from the uh, wildfire. Actually, NO and then NO is also coming from the wildfire. And then there are some background organic gases also coming from the trees, things like that. But the problem is we add more higher concentration of the, this nitrogen compound and CO and then VOCs, volatile organic compound, actually that cause excess uh, production of ozone and then that make the building up the ozone in the atmosphere. <coughs> so we will talk about, today just we will talk about the background atmosphere and the next class we will talk about how uh, people can, people's uh, pollutants can produce excess amount of ozone that can be actually harmful to the uh, uh, human health. So this is the uh, uh, nitrogen oxide compounds uh, formation in natural condition, right? So when you call nitrogen oxide, which is NO, I explain, explain that NO is coming from N2, NO2, <coughs> then very high temperature, <coughs> that's bonding, got broken nitrogen and oxygen molecule, and then produce NO, right? So there's uh, many different ways, actually naturally, uh, NO uh, can produce. One is combustion, wildfire, that's, and lightning. So lightning in the atmosphere, that is very high energy, actually kind of eliminating in the atmosphere, so that bond, bonding between nitrogen and ox oxygen can broken up. So naturally, there can be NO is coming from, uh, can come out from those reactions. And then act also in the soil, actually there's a small bacteria thing, it's decaying the or or organic nitrogen and then they just, by broking up, bro breaking up this chemical bonding, they actually produce the energy they need and then they actually emit a, a small trace amount of NO to the atmosphere too. So they are a natural source of the NO in the atmosphere. Now again, the problem of the ozone pollution are mainly coming from this uh, uh, internal combustion engine. So I explained the uh, last uh, class that um, so most of your cars, unless you drive the uh, Tesla, then uh, you have this thing. Even a uh, Prius has this thing, right? Hybrid car has this thing. Then temperature inside is so high, it can uh, produce a lot of NO in the atmosphere, right? So, probably I just too much confuse you uh, today. So let me tell you this. So this is, is EPA website, and then explaining about the tropospheric ozone. Oh. That's the, uh, So you have a link on your lecture note, right? You can, there's a little voice in there. So this is how ozone is made. Let's, let's do it again, it's fairly short. So uh, the, there's a natural process of, of the uh, ozone formation, but the problem, so again, the NO and NO2 and VOC is a problem. The factories are emitting VOC, NO, VOC, NOx and VOCs. And then cars are emitting <coughs> NOx and VOC. And then on the sunlight, ozone is formed by chemical reactions. Sun and NOx, VOC, boo, that's the atmospheric reaction, right? Then make ozone. If you go this far, there's no problem you are getting B, okay? So uh, this is peace in your mind, so before we dive into the chemical reaction. So, the problem is the, uh, the excess amount of NO and NO2 coming from the car engine, right? So this is a global budget. So a lot of uh, NO and NO2, NOx, is coming from fossil fuel combustion from the engine and factory, things like that. 
But there's uh, some amount of the NO and NO2 is actually from soil, but the microbial activity and then uh, biomass burning. It is real tricky if the biomass burning is have caused by the human activity, that can be pollution, but there's a natural biomass burning, such as lightning can cause the uh, net, uh, biomass burning. So in, this ca in the case, that's the natural processes. Also lightning making the, uh, some um, NO and NO2. So there are natural base of the uh, NO and NO2 concentration there, but the problem we are gonna, we, we have the excess amount of ozone is actually coming from this uh, fossil fuel combustion. So I have 15 minutes to explain this thing. So these are main um, chemical reaction of ozone formation in the air that we breathe, what we call a troposphere. So NO coming from chi exhaust reacted with ozone, then make NO2 plus O2. NO2 hits light. So we discussed about NO2, color of NO2 is brown, right? And then in a visible wavelength, one of the questions was about this. The so visible wavelength region is about 400 nanometer to about 750 nanometer. And then NO2 actually absorb. So this is red, and then this is violet. No, 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 the other way around. Violet and red. And then NO2 is absorbing wavelength below 420. The reason this looks brown is that basically the light is absorbed by NO2, and then if you just mix the other wavelength, leftover wavelength, uh, from 420 to 750, it just looks like brown, right? If you get rid of the violet and blue, then uh, it will look like brown. So, so what that uh, what is happening once that NO2 molecule absorbs the uh, light uh, wavelength below 420? It's going to be decomposed into NO plus oxygen atom, right? Then what this thing is going to be doing, there's 20% of molecular oxygen in the atmosphere. It's making ozone. So there's ozone. There's ozone, right? It can go back, right? But if you like puzzle, what you can do? Is that a little too much today for one day? This is the last slide, though. Is that overwhelming? It's very quiet. Again, this is going to be the most difficult stuff during the whole class, so don't get freaked out. It will be natural. Again, it is all start with NO. That uh, little the video thingy that I showed you from the EPA website. Boom. Yeah. And there's ozone, right? And then they are reacting in the, each other in the atmosphere. If you don't like the, uh, this notation, you can remember like this, right? If you hate the uh, boot notation, just watch that EPA, that the boom boom thing, okay? <laughs> That's all you need to know, but. Depends on your understanding. I, I'm fine with any understanding that you will have. But this is actual chemistry that's going on in the atmosphere. But uh, you can uh, just understand this bubble diagram, all right? So if you take a look at this thing, 
So that's basically the last slide here. So if you take a look at this thing, what's actually going on is that this anode in the atmosphere, it just keeps cycling, right? That's the inner cycle here, going on and on and on and on. And then this, what this cycle is doing is that producing ozone and then destroying ozone at the same time. So this is the main cycle. So keep just kind of rolling on. Then uh, in this part of the cycle, ozone gets produced. And then in this side of the uh, cycle, ozone is removed. Right? That's what's going on. So, oh boy, so depressing. If you take a look at the, your <laughs> face, everybody's so. So, <laughs> um, so let's just take a look at this thing, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, this cycling is gonna keep going, and then there is a right, so, so ozone is gonna be produced from this side of the cycle. Ozone is gonna be decomposed by the, uh, this part of the cycle, right? So, which means that there is a happy middle ground of the uh, ozone uh, concentration in the atmosphere if, if, if there is a right amount of NO and NO2 in the atmosphere. So uh, I'm not gonna solve that equation of the happy ozone concentration today or not even uh, the, uh, during the whole class. That's about 20 to 40, uh, 20 to 40 ppb of ozone. So this is healthy level of ozone because Let's go back all the way. Why we need ozone in the atmosphere? We don't want to have these air pollutants in the atmosphere. So how we can get rid of these air pollutants in the atmosphere? By chemical reaction with OH. Then where is the OH is coming from? It's from ozone, right? So we want to have ozone, right amount of ozone, somewhere in between 20 to 40 ppb. And then this natural cycle of NON, NO2. And then although there's no emission of NON, NO2 from cars or the factory emission, things like that, still there's a natural emission of NON, NO2 from lightning, biomass burning caused by their natural cause. And then uh, uh, soil emission maintains healthy level of NON, NO2 concentration in the atmosphere that drives this chemical cycle. And then I don't think there's not many of you are chemically inclined people, but just in case, then uh, there's a bunch of reactions are going on in the atmosphere. You can summarize this uh, reaction into this bubble diagram that's cycling of NN, NO2, producing ozone, and then uh, destroying ozone. And then in the uh, natural condition, there's uh, no uh, air pollution in the atmosphere then ozone concentration is gonna be between 20 to 40 ppb, and then that maintains healthy level of the OH concentration. We call it detergent of the uh, uh, or atmosphere or cleaner in the atmosphere, actually removes these toxic compounds in the atmosphere. So that's all you need to know for today. The next class, we'll just discuss about how people actually can people's pollution uh, uh, produce excess amount of ozone in the surface air that is harmful for your health, all right?